According to the CDC, there are now six new variants, all competing to become the dominant strain this winter. <laughs> what they don't realize is that they're all competing with a strain that's already infected most of the country called the I don't give a shit about any of this anymore strain. <laughs> I feel a little bad for the variant that becomes dominant now, you know? <laughs> yeah, because, like, everyone has stopped caring. You know, it's kind of like if you won an early season of American Idol, then you were famous. But if you win season 34 now, this is, it's just a story you tell your coworkers at the coffee machine, you know? <laughs> and it's like, I'll have mine decaf. <laughs> I don't know if you saw me last night. I won the American Idol. Okay, I'll have that report to you soon. Thank you, sir. <laughs> but remember, to all those COVID variants competing against each other right now, I just want you to remember, it's not about winning or losing. It's about this, all right? <laughs> Getting into someone's lungs and ruining their week. <laughs> remember that. In social media news, on Friday, Elon Musk kicked off his new job as the head of Twitter <laughs> by... by laying off. <laughs> I like how you built your booth. <laughs> He kicked off as the head of Twitter by laying off half of the workforce. Yeah. He even fired the bird. It was terrible. <laughs> it was last seen in a parking lot <laughs> dick for worms. <laughs> oh, relax, relax. A dick is just a bigger worm. But it turns out, <laughs> it turns out Musk got a little ahead of himself because this morning he's reportedly trying to rehire dozens of people. <laughs> that he just fired after realizing that he actually needs them. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna put it out there. Uh, if he's handling Twitter like this, I don't know how comfortable I would be going with this dude to Mars, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't want Elon walking into my cabin one day like, uh, hey guys, turns out I accidentally uh, fired the team that was bringing the oxygen. Uh, <laughs> but we'll be fine if we just stop breathing for 69 months. <laughs> <gasps> <gasps> In sports news, in sports news, congratulations to the Houston Astros, who beat, who beat the Philadelphia Phillies on Saturday to win the 2022 World Series. Yes, and this was great news for Texas, except for all the people who had to see Ted Cruz smile. <laughs> and I feel bad for the people in Philly, you know? They're blackout drunk, fighting in the streets, and then they had to watch their team lose. <laughs> All right, let's move on to some of the biggest stories of the day. Starting once again with the midterm election. It's that time in American politics where the voters get to send their order back to the kitchen because they don't like how it tastes. Mm, too much inflation. Anyway, <laughs> with the big day happening tomorrow, it's time for us to catch up on all the latest updates in our ongoing coverage of Vote Demic 2022. people. After months of campaign speeches, TV ads, spam texts, and fundraising emails, the midterms end tomorrow. And I'm glad, especially because I won't be getting any more of those spam texts. They were killing me. Especially the ones that start like a booty call, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, hey, Trevor, you up? I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> to save the Senate. Aww. <laughs> but tomorrow, it all ends. And with so many tight races, both parties are pulling out all the stops. Down to the wire, a wall-to-wall -wall weekend of campaigning in the battlegrounds. Candidates locked in neck-and-neck -neck battles, bringing out the big guns. The biggest names from both parties spanning out across the battleground states that will decide control of Congress. Three presidents, Ivanka, past and Johnna, present, Johnna, flooding Johnna, Pennsylvania, Johnna, holding dueling campaign rallies. Fundamental rights are on the ballot. Democracy itself is on the ballot. The stakes are high. Now, even Oprah Winfrey has now jumped into this race. She discovered Dr. Oz, worked with him for years, but now announcing her endorsement of Fetterman. But I will tell y'all this, if I lived in Pennsylvania, I would already cast my vote for John Fetterman for many reasons. Wow. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> coming out. And not just coming out, she came out against Dr. Oz, the man she created, the TV doctor she made famous. And that's always how it goes, people. At some point in life, you have to kill the monster you create. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Frankenstein and his creature, Obi-Wan and Anakin, parents and their kids. 
Every parent knows the day will eventually come when you have to fight your children to the death to determine who will control the remote control. <laughs> but still, Oprah going for Fetterman must have broken Dr. Oz's heart. Luckily, he has the perfect cure for that. Dr. Oz's broken heart <laughs> dietary supplement. It'll enhance your mood and only turn your poop yellow some of the time. <laughs> Get it now before the FDA outlaws it again. <laughs> now, it's not just Oprah. It's not just Oprah. The Democrats are bringing everyone out. Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, which you have to admit is bad news for the Democrats, right? Because the bigger names that you bring out to support you in the midterms means the worse you're doing. Right? Like, if I was a Democrat in Pennsylvania, this would be making me nervous. You know, I would just be like, guess what? Obama is coming to the rally tonight. Oh, boy! And he's bringing Beyonce. Ah, oh, shit, we're so screwed. <laughs> and the truth is, Democrats are nervous right now because they've got a lot stacked up against them in this election. Inflation is high, crime is up, pickleball is taking over for some reason. <laughs> and all of that is sending Democrats into full-on panic mode. President Biden is warning that American democracy is at risk, but it may not be enough to stop a red wave tomorrow night. A lot of Democrats, whether they're elected officials, party leaders, strategists, are panicked that they feel like things are not going well for them in the midterms right now. President Biden heading to traditionally blue Maryland today after a stop Sunday in another Democratic stronghold, New York. Vote. Get out the vote. Now, the president giving a last minute boost to New York Governor Kathy Hochul, running in a now unexpectedly tight race against Congressman Lee Zeldin in a state that hasn't elected a Republican governor in two decades. Yeah, that's how bleak it is looking for Democrats right now. They're scrambling to salvage a governor's race in New York. New York, which is crazy. New York is supposed to be a given for the Democrats. You know, this, this is like having to beg your stalker to like one of your posts on Instagram. <laughs> It's like, come on, man, my feet are in this one. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know, it's just not doing it for me anymore. <laughs> so yeah, the expectations are that Republicans are going to have a very good election and that Democrats are in deep trouble. But keep in mind, keep in mind, that's all based on the polls, which I'll be honest, bugs me about American politics. Cause like polls are just like an idea. It's like what a person says, what they maybe are gonna do. And that's why they're often wrong. In fact, these days it feels like they're wrong a lot more than they're right. You know, if you went by the polls in the last election, like, think about it, Susan Collins would have lost her election by six points. Instead, she won it by nine, right? Lindsey Graham was tied in the polls, but instead he destroyed his opponent. And according to the polls, Joe Biden was supposed to win by eight points. Instead, he had to steal the election. I mean, <laughs> you don't know. And there are a lot of reasons. There are a lot of reasons why the polls could be off. You know, you don't know. Maybe the pollsters are biased. Uh, maybe people who are answering are answering sarcastically, like, oh, I'd love to vote for Joe Biden. <laughs> but the poll doesn't get that. Or maybe the polls could be wrong because the only people who answer polls are the craziest people ever. Have you ever answered a poll? Huh? <laughs> no. Yeah, if you got a call from an unknown number, you don't answer. <laughs> What are you, a creep? In fact, any time a pollster gets someone to participate, their next call is probably to the police. It's just like, hello, 911? Yeah, someone just picked up my call and spoke to me for 10 minutes. You should go check their freezer for body parts. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's worrying. But even though the 2022 election isn't over yet, it looks like the 2024 campaign might already be underway. According to reports, Donald Trump is planning to announce another run for president as soon as the midterms <laughs> are over. Yeah, but he's gonna wait for the midterms first. Because <laughs> he wants to do the responsible thing and see if his election deniers get into power so they can steal the election for him. He's waiting, it's good. <laughs> and even though he hasn't officially announced that he's running yet, Trump is already taking shots at some of his rivals in the GOP. Donald Trump, meanwhile, and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis held competing rallies in the state of Florida yesterday. While Trump urged Floridians to vote for DeSantis in his race against Democrat Charlie Crist, the former president also took a swipe at the governor as a potential 2024 opponent. We're winning big, big, big in the Republican Party for the nomination like nobody's ever seen before. Let's see, there it is, Trump at 71, Ron DeSanctimonious at 10%. Mike Pence at seven. Oh, Mike's doing better than I thought. Yeah, I thought he'd be dead by now. I guess there's always next time he's doing better. By the way, 
I, I love how Trump always gives speeches on the tarmac right in front of his plane. <laughs> Have you noticed how he does, like, the door is open, the stick? It's almost like he doesn't want to spend one second longer than needed with those people. He's just like, keep the engine running. I want to leave this shithole town as soon as I say goodnight. In fact, just dangle me from a helicopter and pull me up when I'm done. I want to get out of here before these rednecks can touch me. You saw what they did to Mike Pence. These people are dangerous. But the reason that speech is going viral is because of that bitchy little swipe at Ron DeSanctimonious. <laughs> yeah, you saw that breaking out a classic Trump nickname. I mean, at least we think it was a nickname. It could have just been Trump trying to say DeSanctus. You know him. <laughs> De DeSanctimonious. <laughs> and, and what makes the story even better is that apparently Trump has been privately testing nicknames for Ron DeSanctus. <laughs> yeah, which is amazing to me. The man is at a meeting with his team of lawyers, and he's like, all right, all right, enough of all the ways that I could go to jail. What do you guys like better? Ron the Sanctimonious or Ron the Shithead? Which one? <laughs> well, right now... Right now, it looks like a Trump versus the Sanctus feud is breaking out into the open. And you know, usually when two men fight in Florida, it's at a Margaritaville at 1 a.m., but this, <laughs> this is a lot more high stakes, which is probably why a lot of Republicans are upset with Trump for going after DeSantis. Yeah, because they're like, what are you doing? We love Ron DeSantis. He's our guy. And Trump is like, yeah, I know. That's why I hate him. <laughs> because you see, People don't realize that's the one thing Trump hates more than anything, is anyone having what he thinks should be his spotlight. That might be the thing that destroys the Republican chances in 2024. Donald Trump cannot stand not being the center of attention. Yeah, I bet he got jealous when his kids were born, you know? <laughs> He's like, congratulations, it's a boy. He's like, I'm also a boy, and I've been a boy <laughs> much longer, so long. Many people in the hospital are saying the best boy of all time. All right, that's it for the headlines. Before we go to a quick break, let's check in on the stock market with our finance expert, Michael Costa, everybody. <laughs> Michael, crazy, crazy times in the economy. W what is happening in the market today? I am crushing it. I mean, I also, I bet big on the World Series. I did. You know, some of you think sports betting seems risky, but not the way I do it, okay? Here's what I did. I bet on the Astros, and I hedged against the Phillies, so I actually won on both sides. <laughs> then I packaged the winnings into a credit default swap <laughs> that I sold off to a retirement community in exchange for equity into their homes. Now, it's, comp <laughs> it's complicated, but all you need to know is that I own most of your grandmother's houses now, okay? <laughs> it's called finance, all right? Now, I got a hot tip for you, so pay attention, okay? I got a hot tip for you. But first, let's get to this chart, okay? Look, this is Twitter going private, and this is the biggest thing to happen to Wall Street since the cocaine shortage of 96, all right? <laughs> now, I was there, Trevor. It was the scariest hour and a half of my life, okay? <laughs> now, Twitter was a publicly traded company, and then after this, right here, it's private, okay? Does everybody understand that? Public, <laughs> private, <laughs> all right? Your opinion matters here because you're a member of the public. But then after a single owner took over, everybody can shut the f up about Twitter, okay? <laughs> Unless you have $44 billion, it doesn't matter what you think of Twitter. Twitter, tw Trevor, what do you think about Twitter? Well, I, I think it doesn't gonna... matter what you think, Trevor, <laughs> okay, okay? Yeah, I hate to do it. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks about Twitter, all right? Now, here's what I think about Twitter. <laughs> Elon Musk is having a tough time with Twitter right now, and here's how we know that, Trevor, because everyone on Twitter is talking about Twitter. That's not good, okay? <laughs> it, it's like in my house. When things are going great, I'm talking shit about the neighbors. But when my wife sits me down and says, we need to talk about us, well, obviously, she did something wrong, okay? And <laughs> now, everyone's questioning Elon's decisions and what he's doing, but let's not forget, the man has 10 kids, right? You know how overwhelming that is? I have one kid. Last night, my hair was in pigtails. I'm wearing <laughs> lipstick, singing the Frozen theme song. My son is 17 years old, all right? <laughs> the, the point is, kids drive you crazy. 
I mean, look what Elon did. He fired people. Now he's hiring the fired people back. He begged advertisers to stay. Now he's threatening them if they leave. But, but of course advertisers want to leave. Twitter's getting too toxic. Can you imagine if you're a brand now? You don't want to be on the timeline. It's like, Nazi, Nazi, cheese doodles, Nazi, Nazi. <laughs> You at least want it to be like cheese doodles. Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. Oh, look, 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 look. The tricky situation that Elon finds himself in is that Twitter is private now. Remember? This is the part of the chart where I told us to shut the f up, right? But it's a platform that only runs on public opinions. So if everyone leaves Twitter, it's worthless. Which brings me to my hot tip, all right? If you have 44 billion, just keep it. <laughs> Back to you, Trevor. It's actually a, a great tip for all the people with 44 billion. Michael Costa, everybody.